All right, moving on to our next game. This is Video Pinball in the arcades. Since the early 70s, we've seen Video Pinball. I don't know why, because pinball, pinball already made arcades. Yeah. Why would you want to turn a video game into a pinball when there's already pinball in the arcades? But here's the artwork. This is Atari Video Pinball. Atari always does the best uh, advertising. There's a terrible picture of the arcade cabinet. Here's our control panel. It, it looks like a mm -hmm. pinball game. I, think, I want to say there's <laughs> buttons on the side. I thought I saw buttons on the side of the arcade cabinet. Yeah, yep. yeah two, two white ones on the side. That's what it looks like. And it looks like, yeah, we got the fl uh, two, uh, two for flippers and the nudge and then how to pull the plunger. There's our marquee. And then this is programmed only in black and white. That's a screenshot of what is actually being programmed. That's it. Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. Right? I was going to say, is there an overlay? Yeah, there's an overlay on it, huh? Yep. Yeah. Let's see if we can get it with the overlay. So here we go. This is February 1979. We're playing video pinball in the arcades by Atari. Oh, nice. Oh, my gosh. So not only do we get the, the game and the overlay, but we also got the marquee at the top. And I can change a few of the views on it. So if we want to look at it a different way, we have the just the LEDs and then uh, the standard. Yeah, so I, I'm going to do – let's do the full thing. Yeah. Why not? Oh, so here we go. Let's put a coin in. Um, after we put the coin in, then we have the plunger to pull back to put enough money in. I'll put another one in. And then – Let's check our controls. That one is. Oh, OK. I see. It's not even uh, a program to the controller. This is programmed oh, okay. to play uh, from the keyboard right now. Do it. So we got uh, left flipper and right flipper. And then the ball shooter is down. So uh, but start does work. So it did start. It's just waiting for me to do it. And I can move my can I have my flippers? Oh, I see what it's doing. The, the overlay is covering up our uh, gameplay. That's so funny. we can see a great overlay, but it's covering up the top. So look, look, don't, no, no problem. We have it a different way we can try. Give me one sec. The overlay was just for looks. It looked great. Okay, so here we go. This one's functional and it plays, but it doesn't have all the flash of the overlay. So in your mind, put those two together. Uh, so here we go. This is uh, same controls, I'm guessing. Let's see. Yeah, same ones. Okay, so we'll put our money in. Couple coins in. We push start, and here we go. So we push down to get uh, our uh, paddle going. There we go, and it, it it flings up. Okay, so I'm able to work the both paddles, and very impressive ball physics mm -hmm. uh, for pinball to make it sim oh. <laughs> to make it simulate something um, that looks like a pinball game is so difficult to do. Yeah, so it's playing very well. In fact, this is the best looking video pinball. It, it's, it, it still makes no sense to me when, at the time, pinball was doing so well in the arcades. Yeah, pinball was huge. I like the sounds. The sounds are cool. Yeah, it sounds really good, too. All right, well, I have no idea what my score was, but in your head, just put together both the, the, the scenes and you can see what video pinball was like. So out of five stars, Jose, what would you give that for 1979? Uh, we'll give Saturday Night Fever pinball three stars because it wasn't bad. It was really good. Yeah. It would have been nice. Three stars. To, yeah, three stars because, I mean, well, yeah, yeah, we'll do three. I know that um, I know that you were saying it was the best one so far, but I don't know. I couldn't... Uh, it's hard to do without the overlay because the overlay is is a big part of the experience, unfortunately. Yeah, and we have an example on the the side over here yeah. of what it would uh, appear like, but um, it it plays like pinball, and that's the idea. Nice. All right, moving on to our next game. Okay, we're uh, still in the arcades. This is, I think, the third or fourth first person driving game we played. This is the very first. Uh, vector-based first-person driving game where it's not using um, like little uh, raster effects or pixels. This is using vector graphics. So way ahead of its time. I've, we've only seen one or two vector-based games. 
This is 1979 in the arcade, so this is right before, or we're right on the cusp of what they consider the golden age of arcade games. And this is one of the games that would be uh, considered one of the golden age of arcade games. This is Speed Freak by Vector Beam. 3D effects? <laughs> I don't know about that. There's the arcade cabinet. So we're going to control it with a wheel and four-speed uh, four gear shifter. There that we go. Uh, zoom in the control panel. <laughs> And yeah, it looks like we just got uh, left, left and right to control it. And there we go. There's the uh, game programmed using vector graphics. Uh, let's see if the manual has anything for us. Whoa. <laughs> Speed Freak. 1979. So uh, for information, so much information about the arcade cabinet. <laughs> Watch for Speed Freak. Mm -hmm. This chapter describes your vector beam Speed Freak game. Thanks for telling us what the chapter is going to describe. It's a long It's a document. colorfully illustrated upright video game appropriately justifies the vector display technology, creating an illusion of three-dimensional roadway filled with exciting obstacles, such as opposing vehicles, roadside ob ob objects, and much more. So single-player, first-person driving. And that's how they described it in the manual. And then you have an accelerator. You actually have pedals that you use for oh, the stand-up cabinet. Yeah, All right, here we go, that, stepping that, up to the arcade. That format looked really familiar like a lot of other driving games back in that time. Yeah, definitely. All right, it's March 1978. This is Speed Freak. And right off the bat, the graphics are exceptional because of the uh, the vector graphics. So sweet. And you can see we're getting the sense of depth. Yep. Like uh, we, we've played other first-person driving games, but they didn't look this good. All right, so let's put a coin in and see what it's like. Actually, actually, I'm sorry. Wait, every driving game we didn't have an operator that set it up, and we had, the wheel was all uh, messed up. So we need to get the operator in here and make sure our uh, controls are correct. Yeah, I thought so. Hold on one sec. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, the wheel's gonna go all caterwampus on us. Yeah. Oh, they have a cow. There's a lot of cows. I saw like three of them already. All right, here we go. That's better. <laughs> all the way down to one, baby. All the way down to one. <laughs> All right, putting a coin in. Push start. If we can do it fast enough, we'll get extra time. So we push start, and it looks like we're going to start off. Yeah, we hit push down the accelerator. Oh <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let's try that again. Push down the accelerator. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. It's so sensitive. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, hold on. Let's try it again. Going back down. Down there. Nice and easy. This is reminding me of a Family Guy joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me try this then. Is this one? There we go. Okay, here we go. We had to get some. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Look, you got the wheel. You've got the axle I was flying in. Hit another car. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it broke apart beautifully. That's kind of cool. And, I, and I'm only in first gear, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't open her Does up too go? fast. You'll scare the kids at home. I love how drastically, like, you're going so slow, but yet the amount, the impact force is like you're driving at 150 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So even with the sensitivity dial way down, let me see if it has any. No, it doesn't. Okay, so in the back of the arcade cabinet, they had dip switches. You could change the controls. But uh, even with the sensitivity cranked way down, it still is super sensitive. This is me turning the wheel, uh, if you can see on the dial. So the, the, the wheel uh, precision is, is needs to be programmed for an actual wheel yep. instead of what we have for, for this game. Okay, there. We're gonna get around the first corner. Oh my God. Oh, there you go. This is as far as we've ever been. Cow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if we had the wheel, the, it wouldn't be as, as, as sensitive on us, but uh, it, very impressive. It's more of an arcade experience uh, to play that one. And it's crazy because it was in an upright cabinet. This would be really good for, uh, you know, you sit down like you're sitting in a car mm -hmm. and driving. Okay, so out of five stars, what would you give Speed Freak, Jose? I don't know. That's pretty impressive for 1979. So let's say, I don't know, what, four stars maybe? Yeah, that was, that was very good looking and uh, had a wheel, four gear shifter, pedals, like you're driving a car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to our next game. Playing every video game. Next game is Space. Uh, 
That's it. It's just the word space. 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 We're going to go back home on our Commodore Pet. And uh, as far as images, artwork, we have nothing. This is most likely a self-programmed game. And I'm going to pull up my cheat sheet to... Uh, here we go. Yep. So uh, I just want everyone to keep in mind, when you... When we load up the Commodore Pet, the Commodore Pet itself has several models. And so we have to know which model of Commodore Pet will run this game. <laughs> so for example, we're running the Pet 3008. There's the Pet 3016. There's all these models of the Commodore Pet. We have to know which model is the correct model that will run the game software that we're playing. Anytime we play anything home computers, that's how complicated it gets to play these games. So um, I'm just going to give it a shot and see if this model that we are on will run correctly. Those poor kids. <laughs> okay, do we want instructions? Yes. You are in deep space, far from Earth. You and several hundred others are on a mission for a Terran defense force to destroy an invading enemy fleet. Uh, by the way, the whole story and stuff in video games, they all started on home computers, just so you know. Uh, they did not start on consoles because every home computer game had text. Uh, at least at, at this point. And so what did they do with that text? Oh, they wrote stories. Oh, yes. So your weapon of choice is a compact, high-powered laser, which can pierce any known substance. It uses a considerable amount of energy of, to fire, so you shouldn't be wasteful with it. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Pressing the shift key fires the laser. Oh, okay, we actually get to fire a laser. And then we use the number key to shoot different things in space. All right, so uh, that was the instructions. What actually is the game like? Does the game even load? <laughs> the noises. Sure, yeah. Okay, here we go. So, um, there's there, there's my laser. And then to control... Okay, yeah, it does work. Wow. This is amazing. Uh, at least for a home computer. Now, I pushed the wrong key. And if you push the wrong key, this is programmed in machine code. So, that means it totally breaks the game. So, the, the, the game is completely broken now. It, it would be because I pushed the wrong key on the keyboard. <laughs> That's how rudimentary it is because this was programmed probably by one person. So if we give it a um, uh, boot it up again, we'll do it without instructions. We'll say no. And then I just got to make sure I push the correct button because if you push the wrong thing, it actually will break uh, the game. Yeah, we want noises. All right, so it controls using uh, keyboard only. So I'm controlling with the keyboard. Shoot. I also cannot hit two keys at once. <laughs> so as I'm moving, I can't move and shoot. I have to make sure I'm on the target and then nice. <laughs> and then make the shoot. I get a little blip and bloop. But this is a home computer game that is an action game. This is this is I'm actually doing something action based, not um, uh, typing th things in. Programmed completely on the keyboard. All right, so that was. Space for the Commodore Pet. Jose, out of five stars, what would you give that? Based on, I guess, home computer games and 1979. I have no idea. I didn't play a lot of those back in the day. So um, I'm going to defer to your your decision, sir. Okay, so I'd say for, for the time, this would be three stars average for what, what, you, what you see. I could possibly go a little more just because it's action, trying to do an action on a, a computer that's designed for only text. <laughs> that was pretty impressive. So, But I'll just say three. We'll say average for the time. And that is time for tonight. We're going to leave it on 1979. We were in March, I think, is where it was, uh, 1979. Thanks so much for joining me again, Jose. It's been a blast. Any last comments or thoughts? Um, we'll see what the 80s have for us. Yes. I have no idea what's going to happen. Because <laughs> we're at the cusp, uh, 1979. But uh, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great night. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9 p.m. Central. So join us and let me know if there's any games that we missed on the way. You can always check me out on YouTube to see any old videos or any of the archival ones before the live stream. Just tell your friends that there's some crazy guy out there playing every single video game or trying to in chronological order. You can look me up on Twitter, on Instagram, and YouTube. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We'll catch you next time.